There you go. How's that? Welcome That's everyone cool. to, to the late night show. I've had way too much coffee today. I've drank. I'm drinking this tea. Maybe chefs heard of it that we're going to have on the show here in a second. Is that this tea that is like the poor man's Ozempic, but it's from like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's from South America. It's supposed to do all these weird things. I drink it every day and it comes, you have to drink it out of this little metal straw, which I don't think, I, oh, I have one here. And, and it's supposed to do some, so if I, everyone's got one, but you have this. Oh, so you don't. Yeah. Special. Yeah. It doesn't taste good by the way. Oh. <laughs> so if you see me sipping on this, it's not my pipe. But just give it gives you an upset stomach so you don't want to eat. <laughs> no, I don't know what it does, but it's not now that I think of it, I don't think I've ate today, by the way. Maybe it does work. Anyways, <laughs> uh we have a great show tonight. We have a legend on, like literally a legend, uh, chef on the on the show tonight. He's coming out with a new book. I was on a show today talking with one of the ladies over at Restaurants Canada, Anna, we were doing a podcast today and I was talking about having Chef on the show today. Chef Shane is is on the show and she pulls out his book <laughs> nice. in her office in Toronto. She goes, oh, you mean this chef? I said, yes. Yeah. So it's super excited. Um, I'm going to let Dominic, I'm going to let you do the intros as I get set up over here with TikTok and stuff. I got stuff over here and I'm going to welcome in. But before we start, we have a word from Restaurants Canada. And for you TikTok people, because you're not on another system, I'm actually going to talk about Restaurants Canada to you on TikTok while Dominic and Chef Shane listens to this message from our sponsors over at Restaurants Canada, if I can find their commercial ad. And we'll be right back with this legend. That's you, Shane, on our show. Here we go. Yeah, we'll be Look there. Look at that guy right there. Welcome, Chef Shane. <laughs> yeah. Now we can't hear him. <laughs> now we can't hear you, Chef. No. Can't hear you. <laughs> Never fails. Is your mic on mute, maybe? Maybe nope. he's muted by us, Jay. No, I checked. Thanks. Oh, you checked. Yeah, you're all over that. Exactly. Eh? Typically my fault, anyways. <laughs> right? To everyone that's joining us tonight on Instagram, as well as every other channel there is, please um, give us send us questions, questions for Chef Shane that's going to be on here. He's just working on his mic. And over on TikTok, please join us. Give us some questions over here. I love when you guys talk to us over here on TikTok. Um, what a great platform to oh, share now. and talk about different things. That's good. There he is. Welcome, Chef. Chef. Shane, welcome. Can you hear me now? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So as long as you can hear me, life is good. <laughs> I can hear you. Life is good, Chef. Okay, good enough. Um, Jay, yeah. Jay, there may be a delay with Chef. He's in. Uh, Chef, are you in the Rocky Mountains? Is that safe to say? Yeah, I'm right downtown Banff. Awesome. Are you in Banff? I am in Banff. Yes. Chef Shane's in Banff. How Chef awesome is that? Where, are you out there doing a residency? Is that right? Uh, I was doing an indigenous culinary program here for some of the restaurant groups. Um, and it's, it's going well. Nice. 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 Yeah. Okay. How's my volume? Am I good? Look. You sound awesome, chef. Yeah. Okay, good. There we go. Good enough. Chef, you just released a book. Is that right? 
Um, I wrote a book called Tuao Progressive Indigenous Cuisine. Um, it's not new though. It's about six years oh. old. But right, we're ac I'm actually at, okay. So how about this? How about this? This is news to you guys. Nobody okay. knows this news, but you. I saved this up for you. Okay. Okay. Yep. This is okay awesome. So this book that Tuao Progressive Indigenous Cuisine has won a couple awards uh, at Christmas time. It was one of the most sought out books for Christmas last year. It did really well too. And we sell it by the thousands. Like it's That's been awesome. selling right out of the gates and it's everywhere. Like you can go to a small town in Saskatoon or some little place around Calgary or Edmonton and you'll find it there. Chef, it was in Toronto today. I did a podcast. Yes, Toronto. I guess pulled it out. Even Chef, Toronto. Eh? <laughs> she in Toronto. She's like, I love pulls that. this out. Yes, I'm having Shane on the show today. Yeah, Mig Migwitch to that guest. But this is the news I'm giving you, though. First for I know, you. I think it's awesome. Okay. No, this is it right now. We are. Oh, we okay. have decided as of yesterday, me and my writer are going to start book two. No way. Hey, that's awesome. Nobody, nobody yeah. knows. No, it, it's not crazy news. It's not like, like news that's going to change lives. But I mean, I do believe that food changes lives by nutrition. So really, I think we are. Changes lives. Yeah, for sure. Plus, so I, yeah. Believe, I believe I had the privilege to have dinner with you in Terroir, a Terroir event here in Calgary. And yeah, you changed lives, man. I heard your stories. You changed lives. So don't say, please don't say your book does it. You change lives and your book does. You're incredible. You're incredible. <laughs> well, um, we go by, I, I have to uh, give a dedication of my entire world and my life and the, and the people that I surround, because if it isn't for those people that I learn from, I'll never be mm -hmm. able to learn these things. Stop. We, and I think we talk about the vocabulary, the Cree, Nehio language. I like to give little words and snippets of words. So then the people that are in the Munyao community get to actually understand a couple of those words that we share. And that's the word that I'll be using today is uh, tapui, tapui, which means truth. So um, today I'm only going to tell you truth. No, no lies today. Tapui. <laughs> tapui is free. For <laughs> tapui. Yeah. Um, yeah, top well, T A W P E. I love um, it. Good, good word to live by, right? Yeah, really it is a good. It is a good word to live by. Chef, and actually, uh, just because I have you guys, I'm sure you got a you got questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna ask you I'm, a question. So you you go ahead I'm, though. You I'm, yeah, I'll just I'll just throw this your way. I'm packing right now, right now to go to Northwest Territories to teach kids how to become chefs up in the Inuit. And then I'm going to go hunting awesome. in the Northwest Territories. I'll be hunting in four days. What will you be hunting for? What's, what's the, what's the, what's the, is it, is it polar bear? Is it, is it elk, elk or caribou? I'm not sure what's up in the Northwest Territory, but one of those two for sure. Probably caribou it's, or something, it's right? Probably gonna, it's probably going. It's probably going to be. No, we're probably going to. It could be that. It could also be seal. Seal. Okay. Seal. Yeah. Seals. Yeah. Seals. Yeah. We might go. We tired. might be going seal hunting. That's awesome. I'm leaving it up. To, I'm leaving it up to them to decide what we're going to be hunting. Um, oh. Chef, for for people that are yeah. listening, there's quite a few on TikTok and, and some other channels here. Sure. Um, in, in a few minutes, for for my sake as well, give us your evolution of where you came from. You said you had a lot of people to thank because you you got to where you are, and they impacted your life. So, tap we with how how did you get to where you are? What was your evolution from being from a from what inspired you to become a chef to now you're teaching other chefs. Uh, indigenous cuisine and maybe how to incorporate that into what they're doing and going up to, to work um, with youth. Is awesome. So I've, I've been able to, uh, 
I started out on a farm like anyone else. I I grew up uh, in between Calgary and Ed, and Edmonton on a small farm outside uh, the big the big metropolis of Penhold, Alberta. And you're from Penhold? So, no way. Yeah, my no, I'm I'm from outside of Penhold. So are you? I grew up on a on an acreage on an acreage out there, and my family taught me to hunt fish at a young age. Um, I always loved food. I was really good at the arts. Um, I was never good at anything else. I love music. I love art. I love, you know, all the, all the artsy stuff, but I was never good at anything. Like I never found myself just attached or naturally good at sports or writing or anything in school. And cooking was the only thing that seemed to, to drag me in. And then I went to culinary school. I mean, I didn't get the greatest marks in my first year. Third year, I came out banging. And then from there, I just followed the path that every good chef does. But unfortunately, that's not the way it's been done now. People get their red seal and they want to become chefs immediately. I did it the right way. I was a commis. I was a dishwasher. I was a garmage. And then I worked my way up the brigade slowly as you're supposed to. And then from yeah. there, I started doing competition and then from there, I started doing television and then I started doing writing and I challenged myself to everything that I, that people have told me in my culinary, culinary career as a kid, every time someone said, I can't do it would piss me off. So then I would push myself to do something that I never thought I would do. Um, even, for you. even for me, like I went to Egypt, I, I did indigenous Alberta cuisine in Cairo. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. No way. Yeah, I've been oh, to LA, have, been to New chef, York. Uh, chef, we have a little treat. We have a treat for you, Chef. What's that? Okay. We have a treat okay. for you. A little surprise. So okay. We're just gonna see. It's coming. Just give it a second here. You keep going. I'll tell you when when they're here. Chef, um, we we we've we've spoken to. We've had the pleasure of speaking to quite a few chefs both on this show and, and on and the Safe Check show, my show. But we spoke with a, with a culinary instructor here in, uh, here in Calgary. And much to your story, he said the same thing about learning in that progression and working in multiple places and learning from different people versus trying to be a rock star right out of the gate with zero experience and zero zero truth to, you know, to their career. They, they just wanted, wanted to be awesome right off the bat. And it, it, I, I think that it probably can happen like that, but I think that's super rare where you would just be it is. awesome without having any experience anywhere else so, except for school. So it's, um, I'm glad you, I'm glad that you shared that with us and that I, I think for, for young people in any career, experience and learning from multiple different people cannot be underestimated for its power. Yes, this is true. This is true. Yes. I, uh, but, but the thing is though, the biggest thing about culinary arts is just because you finish it doesn't necessarily mean you made it. Like now it's time yeah. to figure out who you are, your personality, your style yeah. of food, your path, because Let's say, for instance, we all go to culinary school. We come up with the same red seal. We all go, we all come up with the same culinary degree. Then how sure. do we all find our path? You get what I mean. Chef, before you answer that, yep. okay, I have okay. a surprise guest for you. I have a surprise guest for you. Okay. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> queen. Oh, Lord. You are the, you are the, um, yeah, you know what this lady is to me? Tell us. She's <laughs> the pink in everybody's world. Wow. You want, you want joy. You want pink. You want color. You want somebody can also put her foot down when she needs to, but doesn't in the most <laughs> gentle way. Unreal. How are you? I'm good. Nice to see you, chef. <laughs> Yeah, good. It's, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see you. Pretty cool. Hopefully, you can still hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah, we can. We definitely can. 
So Chef Liana has joined us, everyone. Yeah. So everyone on so, TikTok, Chef Liana, so, also known as Pink. <laughs> let, Pink too. Let, am Pink I too. am I able? Okay, okay. So the, so my you story, oh. my the story of Chef is I'm the the very first time I met her. Um, personality, and it's weird because like sometimes you judge somebody by their food or by their their um um you know like we were all looking at each other's dishes and food and flavors and everyone's trying to be better than the other and whatever there's nothing <laughs> like that with Leanne like personality uh, like no attitude and female rock star um there's only a few of them that I know of um so yeah wow <laughs> thank you that's very nice <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate, that. I appreciate that. That's so nice. Um, so what what was I missed out because I, so, I'm doing stuff. What, yeah. what's the topic today? What's what's on the hot, hot what's the hot button topic? The, the other chef, the other rock star. I don't know. Here. All I know is I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking. Chef yeah. is going up north. Chef's packing right now. He's going up north to teach culinary school for culinary arts to some young students. Very and cool. And, and, then shooting a, and then shooting a seal in the meantime. And shooting a seal, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay chef, can I shooting ask you seal, something Leanne. about that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you something? Um, how how yeah. would you handle how would you handle somebody? I'm I'm not gonna say like a PETA person, but somebody that would say, Oh my gosh, you're shooting a seal, those poor little things, yeah. blah blah blah, like the, sure, uh, or you're shooting sure. a you're shooting a deer. They're so beautiful. And what's, sure. what's, what's the, I know my personal answer to that, but what's, what's your answer to that? Okay. So I think I heard you, you're kind of cutting out on me. Right. Um, but I think what you're asking me is what happens if some animal activists or whatever were to ask me about it or come and pick it. Um, don't worry. That's okay. It's, it's one of those things um, where people are just not educated to understand what that really looks like. I'm going to a community, like for instance, how about I back it up? How about I back it up to this? I was in Prince Rupert and you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to try my best. You see right here on my neck. Yeah. There's these dots. Those are traditional hand poke dots that were put onto my neck by the Niska tribe from Prince Rupert. What they eat there is uh, oysters, crab, seal, whale meat. They hunt it. That's what they live on. That's what their inlet literally lives on in King Colet. So are you going to go all the way up north and say, you guys are doing everything wrong? How about flip the narrative and think for a second that they know what they're <laughs> killing. They do it ethically. They do it honestly. Just like me as a hunter, I go shoot a moose. Am I going to have a line behind me of people telling me not to shoot a moose from my family and friends? I'm doing that even around here. Never mind, I don't know, a three hour flight straight north into the right up into the Northwest Territories. This isn't this isn't even a thought. It shouldn't even be a thought process. Yeah, not not I guess not for not for a lot of us, but for some people they're they're offended by it. They're, they're, then they're not necessarily offended. You know, you hear the people, well, I only eat fish or I only eat chicken or I only eat X. Um yeah. and sure. then when you talk outside of the norm, a seal, um a, a whale, a a, a a bear, a horse, right? People are offended by horse. Um, a lot in North America, but you sure, know, it, it, sure. was the, it, it was the animal, sure. it was the food source for for millions of people for millennia, and you know, all of a sudden we became big arbiters of here's what's right in you know in in 50 years, <laughs> we 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 think we figured it out. So, um, uh, do you do you find that? Um, is that is that getting is people acceptance of that getting better or is it is it depend on the crowd um no it's not getting it's not it's not getting it's better but i'll tell you something hold on one sec 
I'll tell you something that's actually quite interesting. Before we go to something as exagger, like it's not exaggerated, it's a real thing. Um, you know, Leanne's a chef. She's she's seen enough in her life too. We're sitting there doing cook it raw. We're eating bare fat biscuits. I'm drinking whale semen out of a little cup, literally whale semen out of a cup. And yeah, you heard me right. And wait a minute. Do we not know about bear berries? Do people not, not know about rat root? Do people not know about um, the basic berries that are around us? Never mind the, the easy things like steak like stingy nettles or whatever. That's the easy stuff. If people don't understand stingy nettles and then they, they don't understand what rat root is or bear berries is what soap berries are when an Ulu knife, I think I've got, I just bought a brand new Ulu knife. I can see it right over there. Um, I've got a compound bow. I've got my rifles. If they don't even know what those are all about and what they represent and how hard it takes for us to attain licenses and oh by the way uh, i am uh, a registered indigenous man i'm a nehiao man so i don't need the licensing but i take the courses anyways just because i feel it's ethical it reminds me of the things i sort of forgot about and um, I'm following everything in the rule book and I love hunting for my family, my friends, and I like to go and do things for people to help them survive. So there's so much more to the story before you even talk about steel. Cool. I hope that helps. It does. Oh, yeah. It's it's doing I, some homework. It's doing some homework, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's right. It's right. It's right. right. It's building. Right, Leanne? Power. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about building. It's Liana. Is it building that foundation? Yeah, I think it's right. Oh, sorry. But yeah. Then you look at the you look at our our world of uh, of the Cree. Um, you look at the Stony Nation. You look at the Blood Tribe. You look at the Kainai. You look at the Pakani. Um, let's say you go down south uh, under. Um, Washington state, you dip into the tribes down there and the islands that were removed. You talk about truth and reconciliation, blah, blah, blah. It goes on forever. But, um, you know, you're talking about like a mukuzu, which like beaver tail meat. I've had beaver tail. It's fine. It's just gristly. Um, I think, I think now is the time, especially right now with forget the indigenous part of me and just think about where the world is headed in general, like we got to start exploring what's right and what's ethical and what's true. What's tapui? Tapui. That was the word of the day, yeah. uh, Chef Leanna, tapui, which is truth. I like it. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Nehiao. That's very What's cool. Nehiao? Is Nehiao, I like it or think, great. What is Nehiao? Nehi, nehi, oh, here's, a, I'll give you a quick one. And uh, yeah. here's one for just to understand a little bit that people don't know before they get crazy about indigenous. My name is a, is, is a Munyao name, which is a non-indigenous name. My real name is Saint Saint John, Saint John Gordon, which is a name that's going to be named after a priest. Now, if you look at where Leanna's from, because she's a little closer to the, the Blackfoot than I am, they got real indigenous names. So if you hear someone saying, my name's Johnny Three Barrels, Mary Half a Face, Stephen Half a Day, these are indigenous yeah. names. They've not been stolen. Um, yeah. That kind of gives you an idea. Of that. So Nehiao means Cree in Cree. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nehiao. Oh, I'm Nehiao is the real word for Cree. Nehiao man. Gotcha. Hmm. Yeah. Phenomenal. I love it. So chef, I want to, I want to come back to the, cause, I, cause we do a lot. Of, we talk obviously around restaurants and chefs and stuff like this. Are we seeing, and one of the biggest things I had, one of my dreams, and I was doing some stuff with uh, chef Paul out in Vancouver, uh, that is doing oh, yeah. a lot right now with indigenous cuisine and stuff like this across Canada. And one of the things that me and Paul talked about last year is that I believe um, international, I believe, I think it's into Indigenous Day is in June, I believe, right? I think yeah. it's in June. It should be every day, but I understand. It, um, 
what we talked about is that we'd like to see a movement across Canada is that every one that's got a menu, it could be a fast food restaurant to a fine dining and everything in between has yes. at least one indigenous dish on their menu because I think there is every yeah. other nationality on every menu. And typically the yeah. one that's missing is the one that we should have on. So me and Paul wanted to make that happen last year. I have to get a hold of them again. Cause I think it's a um, that we can. I think, I think you got to be careful with that kind of an idea because um, there's protocol protocol is, and it's, I'm, I'm going to go back to chef Liana again, because of the city of Calgary, there's a lot of people that are Blackfoot there. And there's a lot of things where people get nervous to talk to us. They don't want to, they don't want to offend or they don't know what to say, you know, but that's protocol. There's sticky situations in there for instance, that we need to, as indigenous people, we have to um, abide by and make sure that people understand why we do certain things that we do. You have to understand history of us. Yeah. Uh, but I won't get into that because I'm not a historian. I know my part of it. But when you're talking about dishes, like, for instance, Chef Liana, again, I went to a dinner that she put on, all vegetarian, all vegetarian food, unbelievable dinner. I probably had more fun that specific night during terroir, actually, than I've had in a long time. I've never, I never felt such camaraderie and so many people and friends and love and care. Um, even in the kitchen, when I was watching the rock stars all working together. I I just felt uh, a togetherness. So now, if you want to put an indigenous item on every on menus across the country, you have to follow protocol to that terroir or that yeah. area or yeah. a reservation or indigenous people in that area that will teach yeah. you a specific way of doing it. It doesn't necessarily mean, and this is the correction. When people talk about indigenous food, indigenous cuisine, it's not just the ingredients. Chef Liana can cook an elk tenderloin. Does that make it indigenous? Do I, does no. chef, uh, I don't know, you pick the chef around us right now that can yeah. go hunting. Does that make them more indigenous than me? No, mm -hmm. it's about the history. It's about the protocol. It's about the storytelling and it's about the whys. So as mm -hmm. long as they're doing it with, without trying to profit on us, 100%. then it's, it's okay. But if you're trying to do it to raise your bar of your rest, look at us, we're doing an indigenous dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's this, I this can see where you, I, you can't do I it this way. With, so, yeah, I agree with you. I think the, the thing that me and Paul were talking about, how it would, I don't want to use the word force, but it would make people start to learn about the culture better. Like you said, we have to learn the protocol of, of how we would apply this. Protocol is important. And, yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Really good point. But we could do it. I still think we could do right. it if we so follow then, the rules and we learn. Yeah. And if, if it makes people learn about it, and that might be the, the point of it, right? Is that it's going yeah, to force the us. To yeah. Because I'm with you. I'm, I am, yeah. I'm not a big believer where people profit off of these things. And that's not only Indigenous Day, it's every no. No. super special day that we make where restaurants, you know, Yes. Yeah. Poor, Sadie, poor St. Patrick's Day. We keep thinking that it's the beer selling day of the year. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Shane, that's such a nice and, thing. And that's such a nice compliment about that terroir dinner, that vegetarian dinner. I, I really appreciate it. It's amazing. That. Yeah. You it know, was. I, well, I, yeah, I, that's so nice. <laughs> Thank it, you. It's just the reason I'm bringing it, bringing it up is because your name, it comes up in my life more than you think it does. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I say, you want joy, you want pink, because I saw the chef coats in the, and the gear you're slaying. It's pretty sick. And my favorite color, believe it or not, I'm, I like heavy metal. I love, I love Harleys. I, ha I used to have one myself. I love tattoos. I love food, but my favorite color is pink. What's that all about? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's the Aries yeah. in me. Maybe. Yeah. You know, um, the reason uh -huh. why that uh, the reason why I, I wear that color is because you know like um, old and back in the day there oh. was there was no color jackets and right um, there wasn't there wasn't there was only black and white and checkered pants and 
um, I used to work in a very male dominant kitchen and I had a, wasn't the nicest and I had a, true. a lot of horrible things happen to me. And, true. Uh, Fair. Yeah. uh, my, when I had the opportunity to that, my, my mom actually made my first pink jacket. Nice. And, um, so <laughs> I made the decision, you know, like I'm not a, I wanted to be more feminine and I wanted to bring more femininity sure. to the, to the kitchen. That's, that's why I wear those colors. It's because I'm not a boy and I want to, to be more feminine in the kitchen. That's, cool. that's why I do cool. that. That's yeah. Nice. I like it. <laughs> yeah. See, so, so, so now you have your pink knives too, right, Chef? Yeah. Well, you know that my pink knife is was it was a gift um actually from from Knifeware from Kevin. Oh, yeah? He actually had that specially made for me as a gift. It's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. It is in incredible, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Very lucky, very, very lucky to have that. Those those pink pink That's cattle knives. That's your brand, Chef. Right? <laughs> I'm a shame. You probably sure. don't know how much we think about you when you're not in the yeah. room. <laughs> yeah, no, people ask, people ask a lot about you. They ask if I know you, like, really, like, do you know her? Like, uh, um, but they never tell me the context of why they're asking me the <laughs> question. I just, I just answer. It's, uh, let's, so, so, uh, I answer it by, so, so, okay, okay. Here's something I'm going to tell you. If there's a lot of indigenous treaty sixes, sevens, treaties, elevens out there listening, listening, you'll understand. There's this word that we use called skoden. Skoden. Uh, it's skoden is a word in it that's in our language. And every time you guys want to get going, you want to make your day, you want to get through your day, you want to start an awesome day. It's skoden. Skoden. That's the word, right? I love it. But think of listen to the word skoden. Let's go then. 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 Go then. So it. the so the funny thing about the Cree language sometimes they catch you on these on these uh these goofy words that aren't actually really words, but it's still funny to us. Indigenous people are funny people. I'm tr believe me. But anyway, back to the original. What I was going to say to you about this um about this indigenous culinary food that I do. Did you know that I've been doing this for like 15 years? Um, it goes up and down. Uh, we're po we're popular every. 10 years all of a sudden boom indigenous people are cool go away, go away. then boom we're cool again but then we go away when we think of truth and reconciliation you know we hear oh yeah that's the buzzword my my friend cowboy smith he's a really good guy we do a lot of things we used to do a lot of things together and break down protocols of of living a good indigenous life now it's un unfortunate that you know people are noticing in us but it's because of missing and murdered and and graves and all this kind of stuff that are popping up all the time and just worse news after worse news layer after layer after layer now that's why i stick to what i know best indigenous culinary arts indigenous cuisine it brings people together um um there's so much to learn about ceremony river rock ceremonies lilies trills um I don't expect you guys to understand what any of what I'm saying right now is. I want to know what a lily okay. is, though, Chef. You can't go much farther until I explain what a lily is. A, tr a trill? You know when you, you hear indigenous people? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's a real thing, right? But men don't do it. Women do it because in our culture, depends on the depends on the um, on the the nation. I guess, I guess women are the warriors. Women, not men. Women are the ones that make the trills. The lilies. Um, another one. You know the Arabics? You know how Arabics make that noise? Yeah, Liana, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I do. For you guys, it's a, it's kind of a kind of high-pitched noise that they make during ceremony and celebrations. Now, the coolest thing is you'll hear those trills happen in ceremony. Just the other day, I was in, uh, I was in Calgary doing a video. I don't sure if I told you that I'm doing a video thing on YouTube and something else for a magazine. And the minute everyone starts and rejoices and gets ha happy, it's not clapping, it's trills. So that everyone makes that noise. And the Blackfoot tribe and the Stony, they do it really well. They know how to roll their tongues well. It's an art. It's an art. I'm telling you guys. So anyway, these are the kind of things, though, you got to learn. 
And then once you got to get to the culinary arts of indigenous, you're talking about rubabu soup. You're talking about stone soup, which is not just indigenous here. That's a, that's all over the world. Um, Singabong is something I just learned from a good friend of mine that I'm trying to research Singabong style cooking. Out hey, what is it? Fire, really I old. In, what is it? I don't know it. I'm learning it. It's an old ancient indigenous style outdoor cooking, but <laughs> Um, Liana studies a lot. I study a lot. Maybe you guys do too. I'm sure you guys know a lot about food. So you see these outdoor cookbooks where you get these famous chefs all over the world. But the, but I'm I'm hearing more about this Singabong's mm -hmm. style cooking than anything at all. And I find that quite interesting. Um, but there's just so much more like licorice fern, um, oh, yeah. wild. Yeah, you know, licorice fern. Yeah, like I'm learning yeah. a bit more about about what, what it does for your body. Um, then things like cramp bark. Um, I don't know. There's just so much to learn. And then obviously pemmican, but how to really make pemmican from the organ fat, not just any fat. It's actually fat that's around the heart and the gizzards and the kidney. I don't know, man. It's just, there's Chef. so much to learn. Chef from the, from the food safety perspective, you talk about pemmican. Um, yeah. When we teach food safety, we we talk about, and and I don't know a lot about this. I, I but I know because I, I grew up in, in Thunder Bay, and I, I I know a lot of indigenous oh. people. But um, yeah, and and but pemmican, um, you know, people talk about preservation methods and natural preservation methods, and we talk about food safety, and we talk about food safety thousands of years ago before we ever were here that this was happening naturally by indigenous people yeah by having berries and meat and drying it and 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 doing these natural methods for yeah. thousands of years and you know somebody way back figured it out right i'm sure i'm sure a lot of people died before they figured it out but they did sure and, yeah um and the the methods you know, kind of the what's old is new again, right? We're trying to get back to, hey, how can we do it naturally? How can we do it without any preservatives? How can we do? And the reality is, hey, we, we just have to look really close to home. People have been doing some of these things for so long and doing it sure. well. And we just thought, well, that's got to be, that's got to be dumb. That can't be good, right? We got to, yeah. of course, we got a better way. And, and usually we don't. <laughs> right. Well, Look at look at look at what we're discovering now that indigenous people have always been right. Here's what here's something that people are gonna I don't know if anyone's gonna roast me on this one. I'm gonna say it anyways, just because it's true. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the theme. That's the theme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. I just don't care. <laughs> were you gonna tell me you're gonna tell me otherwise? Go ahead. Unless you know more about my culture, anyone out there in the culinary world, that's okay. Um farm to fork. Farm to fork. <laughs> Farm to fork. Okay, how about, to how, fork. About, how about your marketing no boys to fill your restaurant? Far, farm to fork. We're far. We're forging now. We're hunting. We're fishers. Wait a minute. Oh have you not boy. looked at what the indigenous people have been doing for 350 years? And we, we called it oh, what you call forging. We call pickers. Um a little bit of difference, but it's always been there. History shows um, that indigenous <laughs> people have always been really I mean, bang on. It's like every year, the new trend is comfort food. Oh, what? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and, the com and comfort food, as you know, like, okay, okay, okay. Here's one. Here's an Liana. I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying over this right now friendly food for your chef at home. Like I'm looking at all these videos on people making little ways of making wieners with pasta stuck in them and cool yeah. little, little thing. Like, Oh my, when's the professional cooking coming out, please. But you're right though. Like the, and, and actually rustic food or no, comfort the food. Store, bone broth. Oh, what? You mean <laughs> stock? <laughs> yes. Well, bone broth gets you about four times more money. <laughs> yeah yeah throw a label on it yeah you're right <laughs> maybe five yeah but see that's the thing it's there's nothing wrong with with um discovering something like farm to fork 
I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with Bannock, even though I know the history of Bannock. And I understand it's a European colonization thing, but you know, there's things, there's reasons why I do enjoy, I do like, I do agree why Bannock's in our culture. It's like, it's like Leanna teaches me something 300 years ago for me to survive. It may not be good for me, but at least it helps me survive. I'm going to give it back to her. No, I'm going to take the gift. I'm going to create into something that I like maybe differently, but it's still a gift. I'm not going to give it back. She gave it to me, meaning the best. And so I'm going to continue. And that's what Bannock really is derived from was, was that trade, right? It's trades, it's trading. Um, I grew up. So yeah, you know. Did yeah, you? right. And so did you? That's yeah. that's pretty awesome, right? That's pretty cool. Yeah. I got uh but th- but that's the thing. And and those are the there's nothing wrong with farm to fork. I'm just kidding. I'm just saying that it's just the mark some of the marketing employees, some of the marketing tools that well, are being used are just so exaggerated. Sense. Yeah, and it's and um there are there's other words that we all make fun of as chefs, but it's just because we all we have the trade, right? That's what we do. We've been me and Liana have been around this. So if you guys understand it too, because we're all somewhat the same age to understand that in our in our world, there's so many people that were never educated. They were just thrown into the kitchens at the age of 12, 14, 16, moved their way up. And uh, you know, um, you know, this conversation comes right off of your words, by the way. I just listened to the late night show recently and you however, talking about this. Just however, so you know. <laughs> however, you do marketing is very critical yeah. to food business. You need it, you have to yeah. have it, and you need to be educated how to use it for selling yeah. your food, whatever That's you're true. doing in your life. No matter what you're doing in life, you need to sell yourself. I personally took marketing. Um you know, you take I, marketing too. Why am I learning all this today? <laughs> yeah, I took marketing. <laughs> I went to Grant Ooh. McEwen uh, and took a marketing Ooh. course. Yeah, of course. I took two dimensional art, three dimensional art, sculpture and design, marketing. We I heard that. We heard the food. art part about plating. I remember that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, duh. I used to think that I have a the here, theory. man. You're supposed to listen. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah all these are critical for food and passion and you, to to do what you do yeah of course i was gonna say the part that i love about marketing today and this maybe also when you look at what chef shane's talking about is that marketing is moving to a whole purity now meaning it is get it the is. editing away stop it right even the stuff the chef that you're shooting down in calgary i saw some b-real of you and it's like pure oh, yeah. authentic it's good stuff and we're done, and I and I believe this because I'm in marketing, and I believe that through the '70s, maybe the '60s, but more, well, maybe '60s too, we really got into the perfect world. We wanted the perfect image. We wanted the perfect car, the perfect, mm-hmm. you know, the perfect people on the advertising. True. True. We wanted the plastic food on the plates that look like we wanted this perfect atmosphere. And I think what's happened, and we saw this really speed up through COVID. Is that this purity? We wanted pure. We want real people. We want. We don't want the fake stuff anymore. And this is coming into the marketing world like a train, and it's awesome. I love it because it is awesome, right? As as Dominic knows, I by no by any means am perfect. Most of the time, I got marbles in my mouth, and 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 I, and I like it because I don't believe a bank commercial. God love banks. I don't believe a commercial ever. Right. But I believe someone that gets on TikTok and talks about how awesome a bank is, I'll eat it up any day. Right. Sure. But, but you still have here. to know how to convey that message. Right. Like Shane's a very good speaker. You're a very good storyteller. Right. Because you believe in what you're saying. You still know how to yeah. say a message. You still have but to it's know storytelling. It. It's all about storytelling today. It's not about selling. Well, it's about storytelling. Can I ask you yeah. a question? Yeah. If if you went back to the beginning of your career, when when after you after you did all those steps and you're you're starting to come into yourself, you're starting to realize who you are. Do you do you think obviously you're a better storyteller now without I I don't I don't even know you, but I'm gonna say just because of time, you've become a better storyteller. But what what um 
What made you stop and say, I'm going to try and do this in this way because I think it's not being said or I think this is going to resonate with people and I've got a story to tell and here's how I'm going to do it. What, what, what happened? Did it just happen naturally or did you make a conscious decision? I'm going to do this. Okay. If I, if I answer this, this, this isn't going to be something I want you guys to feel bad about. No, I just no, want you to know the truth. I've been That's, talking about this for 15 years yeah. and no one's listened. No one's ever paid attention to me. I've been going to, to all these culinary events and these collaborations. I'm the one that no one ever spoke to. And I still showed up. I went to Montreal. I was in Toronto. Nobody knew me. Everyone's the coolest chef, the coolest this. I was never, ever noticed, but I still do. I remember I was in Calgary and doing an event years ago at the Calgary, um, the heck's it called um I, I i can't remember but i was there no one spoke to me all the chefs knew each other i did pemmican that was probably about nine years ago and um Seriously? yeah nobody nobody tried my dish no one cared about it um i'm not i'm not saying like that it's just everybody in every town i was in chicago i was in new york nobody cared about indigenous anything and so i still like i said since i was a kid when people said I couldn't do it, I was still learning. I was still learning what thumble, thimble berries were. I was trying to figure out what um, uh, indigenous words were, call it, um, uh, what's right from wrong. There's so many things I was still studying, and still no one would listen. No one cared. And then um, I would say the first group of chefs that came to my light, I'm not saying this because Leanne is on this right now, was the Calgary chefs. The Calgary chefs were the first to step up and go, who is this guy? Uh, where did he come from? And then they made me feel welcome. And I never, I've never said to anyone, you can ask anybody in my life. Calgary has always opened their arms for me. And that's culturally, personally. And yeah, I've always been speaking the same language about um, salmon fishing and the dock, the places I've been flying and going to i've been doing this for years it's just recently people have been noticing that i've been doing it more but TikTok is new to me anyway <laughs> and instagram wasn't around 12 years ago when i was flying up to yeah. prince rupert you get what i mean so yeah, uh, yeah. my exposure is now more because of all these platforms so it's yeah. by no it, it's by nobody's fault except for now there's more things i can post more for sure but has your but I haven't told my story. It's always been the same. Oh, that, well, that's where I was getting at. Is is so you were telling it, nobody was listening, but you persevered. You kept telling your story because for years I was yeah. 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 So I didn't care. I didn't care is, if anybody didn't care. Jay, the moral of the story is don't give up. Because the, that's the, the and that's for anything, right? Chef Leanna, I'm sure, would say the same thing. I would say the same thing is you, there's going to be naysayers, but if you know your truth, what's, how do we say it? Chef, how do we say truth? Tap we. Tap we. Tap we. Tap we. You know your truth, then. That's right. Um, yeah. And, and you know what? Here's, and here's the other reality of that is even if nobody ever heard it and you said it and that was good for yep. you, then that's awesome too. That's, that's, that to me, that's, that's, yeah. hey, if you're doing it, if you're doing it to get noticed, you're doing it for the wrong reason. But if you're yeah. doing it because it's truth and it's, it's well, important to you, then awesome. Right. Somebody's going to benefit. That's a, that's a bonus. Well, yeah. And, and going to what Liana was saying, there's a lot of things I've done where a lot of the newspapers and the media have asked me to be in the limelight. And I said, don't take pictures of me, man. They're the ones I cooked for. Okay, I'll, I'll say this now because this happened years and years ago. So there's nothing I can benefit or anything I would even want to. I cooked a private class for the CNIB, a cooking class for the blind. Awesome. For, the, for the blind. Cool. I taught yeah. them how to make. And so when they came, the, new, the journal came. They're like, we want to do a big interview. I said, don't even bother. Go do an interview with, with the kids and the, and, the, and the group. Talk to them. You know, so there, I'm a very, I'm a very, um, 
ethical person when it comes to everything in my world. I think about others more than people will ever, ever, ever know. Um, for me to make money, the only way I feel like I should make money is by telling the truth and always telling mm -hmm. the truth. That's the only way I, I will live, live and die that way. I want to make I want to make a million dollars to tell them the truth. How about that? <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's funny. If I, I feel the same way, right? Domino knows this. I suck at lying, by the way. Like I'm really bad. Yeah. Like, I could do better in that space, but it's just because I believe in this. I believe in telling stories. I believe in being authentic, real. And, and, and to your, it, it's tough sometimes because so many people don't believe you. Isn't that weird? You, you like tell the truth and people don't believe you. I yeah, they don't or they, or you're exaggerating. Like I mean, I yeah, remember yeah. when I you know, okay, okay, so in my book, and me and Leanna know him now very well. Uh, um is Suser Lee. Su Chef Suser Lee out of Toronto had a cookbook years ago. It's a weird book too, like it opens like yeah, I have this. Book. It's hard to explain. And uh yeah. I have that yeah, book. I read that book. When did that book come out? It must have been twenty. I must have been twenty four, twenty six, twenty eight, or something. Yeah, and that inspired me. Susur Lee knows yeah, it because we were on the wall of chefs, right? His, and his menu that book is still inspired, up in inspired me. My kitchen right now, <laughs> from like two thousand and I don't know See? four or two. His menu is signed still on my wall. Serious. Yeah. But that's crazy. But, but this is the thing. Like, but Jay, can you imagine the first time I opened up a, a Chinese cookbook with French, at, like with French accents? I see talons, I see duck heads, I see tongues. I'm like, I see feathers. I'm like, this should have been my, in my indigenous life like 10, 10 years ago. So initially it was Suser Lee that made me start down my path because I, because I was used to French food, Italian food, yeah. chicken, Parmesan, veal, scallopine. Yeah. So me and Liana go to school together. What are, what are we going to be? Who's going to be any, how are we going to be any different? And I saw that and I said, that's indigenous food, but I got to figure out in my way, in my life with my family and my friends. He, yeah. he knows I, he knows that I, I started because of that book. That's cool. great. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I even wrote it. And then by, and as I've gone on in my life, I get information of uh, culinary notes from my friends uh, in Calgary. Um, and also just my, my indigenous friends I look up to when I'm, when I'm a little bit lost off track and I can't quite like find an answer for something. I look to my indigenous friends out there and I ask them questions. I am not afraid to ask anybody questions. And I make mistakes in my own in my own indigenous world. And when I'm corrected, I think about it and I explain myself. Or I, you know, I review what, what it is I do or don't do. But I've done a lot of study. But I do have a lot of indigenous people that I do draw upon that help me through my my um, my ceremonies and all that kind of stuff that rep that that I fold into culinary arts. Cool. It's awesome. amazing. Amazing. Chef, you're amazing. Both of you are. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Love it. And then we got Rita here. I love that, Rita. All truth <laughs> tell us. Good line. I yeah. love that. Oh, Rita, love she's that. so nice. You're so nice, Rita. Awesome. Oh. Awesome. Nice. Your chef, did you read it all? I did, yeah. That's pretty cool. Pretty bad actors out there. Yeah, I know a few. Um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Chef, yeah. as, uh, we got to wrap up this here quick because I know that you right. have you got to you got to get going here soon too. We got to get back in. Oh yeah, and Shane, yeah. sometimes I want to talk to you about um, my I've I've been a long time obsessed with soap berries, so I want to talk to you sometime soap about berries. soap berries. Yeah. 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 yeah soap yeah. berries got to whip with your fingers. Oh, I know. I I know all about them. I grew. Oh up yeah. Them. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What's a soap berry, Leanna? You can't tell me. <laughs> And then <laughs> chef's like, you gotta whip with your fingers. They're really, they're really <laughs> but uh, but um, you know, but but I want to like use them in, in like savory applications, not just like they're typically used in sweet applications. But 
um, but I'm, yeah. I'm upset in using them in savory applications. Are so, they red? Yeah. So anyway, so I want to, yeah. I like to like, you know, uh, explore that sometime for something fun with you on a, maybe another platform dinner thing sometime. <laughs> I mean, sure. Not on uh, seven social media ideas. Sites, I have all these yeah. ideas. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, that was just that, you know, in my brain, you're here in this moment. So I just thought, thought I'd just bring it up. Well, I can I quick can I tell a quick fifteen second story here? It's important that we share stories because my culture, my culture, and the people that are in. Here we go. Okay, okay. So, so this is the story. So the the way we have to live our good lives is we have fun, we enjoy people's company, uh, we do all of these uh, these great things as human beings, and always be great. So what we need to do is find the spirit of the bison. So here we are in Treaty 6, Treaty 7, Alberta, uh, Plains Territory, obviously, and the bison is a big contributor of our diets, right? But the big thing about the storytelling, and a lot of people that are actually listening to me right now know this story, but there's people out there that don't know the story. If you actually know, if you actually pay attention to bison and how, and how they roam, the one thing about a bison is if it sees a storm, what the bison naturally do is run to the storm. They don't try to hide. They don't try to like find cover. And you can look it up. You can actually like type it in, look it up. They run to the storm and they run through the storm. And that's what we've got to do as human beings. We have to have the strength when we have tough times in our lives and we're looking at TikTok and we're looking at Facebook and we're talking to people face to face, still happens. Um, <laughs> we do have to give them that, that, that advice to be like the buys and run through the storm. Push yourself. The bison come out bruised. They come out cut. They come out injured. But you know what? They come out on the other side. So they faced the worst they can do is to just go right through the storm. That's a representative of the bison spirit. So hi, hi. Tapui. Honestly, Tapui. have the bison spirit to you all. Thank you, Chef. That's, that's an awesome story. Yeah. <laughs> I just made some bison pate today at work. Bison pate. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that sounds liver. delicious. That <laughs> yeah. only sounds wow. Yeah. Well, wow. I, I thanks for letting me crash your 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 show here, Shane. Thanks, Chef Liana. Of Chef, course, Chef. Yeah. Um, um, I'm having you for lunch here in the next two weeks. Me and that you. Sounds like that sounds devious. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay. Sorry. I'm having. I'm taking you out. I'm taking you I'm out for lunch. You for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. For lunch, uh, yeah. and then uh, we have some stuff to talk about that we never finished from before. But <laughs> or I'll, I'll let you take me. I'll buy you. Bring me. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, Jeff, hey, Jeff, Jeff Shane, I want to say thank you. Uh, safe travels. Safe travels. Wow. Enjoy all, all up north. Enjoy your trip and your hunting. And, yes, uh, I'll be posting. No matter what, oh, I can't wait to see it. But no matter what anyone likes or doesn't like, they can come chase me down. I'm gonna eat some seal meat. Yes, yes, I am. Awesome. Gladly. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. No, thank, thank you, you, Chef. Thank you so much for your time, Chef. And everyone yeah. else, thank Liana, you, Liana. You betcha. Kisses, Liana. <laughs> chef, Chef. <laughs> nice to see you. Right. Okay, have a good Thanks flight. So Take care. We'll everyone later. All the best. Dominic, stay, stay on, Dom. Bye, Dominic. I'm and saying we'll bye, it. Chef Fiona. Thanks we'll so much. See you guys later. Thanks, everyone, for joining Late Night yeah, Show. Thanks, <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys later. Bye.